Hi, and welcome back to the Bronx Journal. I'm Jessica Alaskas. Bachata is a music and a dance style that brings a feeling of joy and passion to many in the Latino community. It has a very distinctive guitar and instrumental beat that elicits romantic feelings, and although it comes from the Dominican Republic, over the past decade, bachata has gained international recognition. Today on the Bronx Journal, we have a bachata group, Bachata Heights, New Yorkers who represent the culture and the people of the Dominican Republic. Guys, welcome to the show. Thank, thank you, for thank you. Us. Thanks for having us here. No, thank you. Um, so why don't we start by uh, in, you know, telling us who you are and uh, your names. Cool. I'm Jerry. They call me Jay Heights. I'm the lead singer. Okay. And I'm Jonathan, the lead guitarist. They call me the Phenomena. And I'm Diego. I play the bass. Diego. So Jerry, <coughs> Jonathan, and Diego. Yes. So Bachata Heights. Where does uh, Bachata Heights come from? The name. Where does the name come well, from? Well, we're originally from um, Washington Heights, New York City. We were born and raised there. Um, at the time when we were, um, we were actually very young. When me and my brother Jonathan, mm -hmm. we were into hip hop and rap, and um, we got influenced through that music. So we started off doing beats, um, producing beats, and. Um, one day, um, my father brought a, a, a tape at that time from an artist called Alin Rodriguez, and um, that, was a, that was the album that changed our lives, all three of our lives, because since then, we've, it was how actually a bachata album. And how did that change your life? What was so special about that? I guess the rhythm, the lyrics, and Raulín Rodriguez, um, he sings with so much passion, you believe what he's, what he's singing mm -hmm. in the songs, and I think that's what caught our yeah. attention. And then my brother, he's the guitarist, so the guitar rhythms influenced him, and then Diego was always with us because we were all raised together, and mm. it just grew on all of us. What's the, uh, what's the style of this bachata? Because bachata has a little bit of, you know, it's a little different. Yeah. What's, what's the style? Well, from when we first fell in love with bachata, which was like around 1995, when we really like, embraced it, it was very traditional. You would just hear the guitar, the bass, something called la guira, and bongos. Um, Throughout the times, um, groups like us, younger groups, have, have um, changed a lot of that because we've added new sounds. We've added some hip hop influence onto it. We've added piano, we've added um, violin, strings, and I think that's what sets us apart, especially the young generation. That's why it's been able to expand so much worldwide because we've added sounds from different cultures. And, I see. And that. Mm -hmm. So you two are brothers, right? Yes, mm -hmm. me and Jonathan are brothers, yeah. What about you, Diego? Are you part um, of the family? I'm cousins with the guys. Yes. Cousins, so cousins and brothers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it difficult working together because you know, as a family, is it a more complicated? Uh? Not really. Um, of course, there's gonna be days that we're gonna argue, and we're gonna take each other's um. Like we always gonna mm -hmm. find the the negatives and positives, but we're not gonna be afraid to say it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Without ending up in a, like an argument that we're not gonna talk to each other ever again, we know that by tomorrow, be like nothing ever happened. So we'll just move on with mm -hmm. it and keep making music. Right. So when did uh, when did you started as a group? When did it um, all start? Like Jerry was saying that when we were young, like around 1995, Jonathan started learning the guitar, and then from there he act it was funny because he actually assigned. You're gonna be the bass player. You're gonna be the singer. Yes. You're gonna be this. So it was like a hobby. We just in the house making noise. Making noise. That's what we used to do, <laughs> make noise. All yeah, the neighbors the hated us. <laughs> yeah. So then it was a hobby. We would, like stayed out the streets. Right. And it was positive. Our positive. parents mm -hmm. were always for it because we went in the street. You know, we was always home making music. And then like around 2003, we made it more serious as a band, like going out to perform in clubs, getting gigs here and there. And then like around the year 2007, we got signed to a label. Mm -hmm. And then from there, that's when it took off. That our song, Me Puedo Matar, a new chapter. went to another level, mm -hmm. like number one in the billboards. Do you write your own songs? Yes, yes. yes. Jerry writes. Mm -hmm. I write the songs, and um, once I got the, 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 like the bass idea, the lyrics, the, the beat, I mean the rhythm and the chords, I would meet up with the guys and um, Jonathan and Diego be in charge of making it sound, you know, making it come alive. Have you recorded any CDs or anything, um, you know, published on the internet? Yes, yes. In 2000, late 2009, our first album came out, which was called The First. That's the album that had the single, Me Puedo Matar. That's the song that... Me Puedo mm -hmm. Matar. Yeah, mm -hmm. So, uh, puedo mata Me Puedo Matar. Yeah. Um, is that a special um, single for you? 
I think it's very special yeah, for very us because it's the song that kind of like that let the world know that we exist. That's the song that like broke us through, and thanks to that song, we've been able to travel the world and, and um, touch other countries that we never imagined we would. You know. I see. I see. So, Jonathan, do you? Uh, I mean, I know you're the guitarist, but mm -hmm. uh, are the songs in Spanish, English? Well. Most of them are in Spanish, but we also add some, you could say Spanglish, you know, we mix it with the English. Um, so, yeah, we have different, we put different elements into it, you could say. So, um, I know your brother mentioned that um, rapping, mm -hmm. you know, as little kids, you know, was a big influence. How, how is that? Well, you could say like the hip hop, you know, it, it always influenced us from the beginning. Um, since we're from the Heights, you know, it was uptown Manhattan. And, what you see outside, you know, you, you're influenced with that, like the, the, the culture, the people, you know. I see. So what we try to do instead of, you know, there's, also, there's a lot of negative, you know, in that culture and that, but we try to take a lot of the positive things, you know, and just, and we, you know, maintained, stay Absolutely. focused with that, you know. So Jerry, how old um, were you both when you, and you as well, when you realized this is what I want to do, you know, this is, you know, for you, this is, you know, I want to sing. Yeah. When, when did you realize this? Um, well, I think as soon as we fell in love with the actual music, we, like Diego said, Jonathan assigned the instruments before we even knew how to play it. So Diego? We are, mm -hmm. No, oh, Jonathan, Jonathan. Oh, assigned, Jonathan. Diego mentioned, mm -hmm. yeah, that Jonathan assigned each and every one of us the role, like what we're going to yeah. do in the group without us even knowing yet what's a guitar. We didn't know how a, how a bass is supposed to sound. He just told you, you're going to be the bass guy, I'm going to be the guitarist, and you're going to be the singer. So we all took on our role, and we all studied and, yeah. and learned it, and that's how it came alive, really. So you could say we started, we wanted to do this as soon as we like learned about the whole genre and, mm -hmm. and what it brought. So Jonathan, you were very organized, and <laughs> you knew what you wanted everyone to do. Yeah, I always try to, you know, do yeah. some positive things. He learned, he learned first about the, the instrument-wise, like... He was already learning the guitar while mm -hmm. we were yeah, still in love like with the, the chords, music. We were just yeah. listening to him. He was learning the guitar. Mm -hmm. So then when he found out there was bass, a second guitar, Congo, he took all of us, all the family. And he was like, mm -hmm. you're going to play this, you're going to yeah. do this, you're going to do that. So he formed like a little band within the family. Yeah. And to this day, we're still together. We're still together. Now, that's yeah. the, one of the reasons I think that we're still together. Cause that's great. When it's yeah, friends, yeah, it's, it's been like different. A, a neutral dream of, the, of, the, of us, of ours. So I think that's how we're like, and then to get the hit, we were, we saw like, wow, the dream is coming alive, like it's becoming mm -hmm. true. So I think that's why we've been able to stick and like, no, if we made it this far, we could, we could only go farther. And that, you know? and that must be a great feeling to have. Sure, sure, yeah. yes it is. So I want to talk a little bit about um, Yo Soy El Mejor. Yeah, yeah. Soy El Mejor. Yeah. Uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about that? Um, the song is about like domestic violence within relationships. I mean, you see it, you see it, and hear about it all the time. Where sometimes the guy puts his hand on the woman, or even vice versa. Was sometimes that, the woman will put the hands was on. Was that guy. a uh, for any particular reason? Uh, mm, not really. Abuse? I mean, no. I mean, we do see it in in our community. We see it on TV. Um, what sparked my brain, um, I'm, I don't even remember, I just remember hearing the melody, the melody that I had for the song. So then it just came about and I started writing about that and I think that's why the song picked up and people related to it because it was something that happens in our, in our community. Absolutely. Yeah, so, Absolutely. Um, but that song marks, I think, the ending also of when we were with our label, that marks the ending of when we started to distance ourselves from the label. And from that point on, we became independent artists as well. Beautiful. Yeah. So why don't we go and take a look at the video. Mm -hmm. cool. um, let's show everybody what you guys did. Nice. Let's take a look. conexión entre tú y yo, pero prefieres callar para evitar problemas entre tú y él, entre él y yo, por mí no temas amor y que él tiene poder, hazme el favor de traer el celular, siempre te trata mal, te sigue siendo infiel, yo sé que tú lo ves, te llamo bloqueado para que no se por otro nombre Déjalo volar, no creas en él Quiero que seas mi mujer Déjalo volar, no creas en él Que no te trata bien Déjalo volar, no creas en él Quiero que seas mi mujer Déjalo volar, no creas en él Ven que él no te trata bien Bachata Heights Wow. 
gangster. Get with me, baby. Wow, guys, that was, I really enjoyed the video. You know, I like the concept behind it, you know, physical, uh, physical abuse. Yeah. I mean, it's right, happens a lot. So I really enjoyed that, you know, you guys um, did that video about that. Yeah, so tell me, what are the future plans? Well, right now, currently, right now, we're promoting a new single, which is called Astronauta. Um, the single's doing very good, gracias a Dios, um, it's charting very well on the billboards. We're on number seven on the billboards, on the Latin billboards. Wow. Yeah. So we're holding that spot, so we're doing good. And right now we're actually working on the album, finishing up the album, and um, hopefully that'll be out by um, late, um, beginning of next year. Beginning of next year. So that's Astronauta. Astronauta, yes. What does that mean in English? Astronaut. The song is about um, a guy that doesn't pay enough attention to his girl. So the song is like telling her, I'm sorry for, for being in another world, for being in the moon, when you, instead of I should be paying attention to you or whatever. So that's what the song is about. I mean, it could, it could, anybody could relate to it. Maybe you here, you're so busy focusing in, in your career and your job that sometimes you're away from your loved ones. It could be your mom, it could be your dad. That's what the song is based on. So it's like a metaphor, a metaphor way of saying, Sorry for not paying attention to you. I've been like an astronaut on the moon. I've been in another world. Does that song mean anything to any of you three in particular? I believe so, definitely. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. there's... Um, yeah, definitely relate to it. Yeah. yeah. I think people just see when we're like smiling, happy on stage and performing, they don't... You don't see and think of all the time in reality we got to spend the way and how much times and hours we got to put into mm -hmm. our careers. It's like, so. yeah, it's like when we're in Europe, for a whole month, it's like we were like in another planet because it's like in a different world, you know, you're in Europe yeah. and you don't know what your, what your family's doing. Even though you try to get in, you know, keep in contact, it's, it's hard because you're not seeing them, you know. So it's Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you're always together, wherever you go, yeah. always yeah. together. Yeah, there's times we're together more than we are with, with our own family, so it's crazy. So where can, uh, where can we find you guys? YouTube, Facebook, uh, any? I mean, you could. We got a Facebook, which is official Bachata Heights. We also have a Twitter, which is also Bachata Heights. And um, and very important for us is our YouTube channel. It's called Bachata Heights TV. We always upload mm -hmm. everything we do, live performances, interviews. They're all up there. So make sure you guys subscribe. If you guys want to contact the group, book the group. They could also look us up in um in our Facebook. We have the manage management contact there. Okay. Any message for the younger, um, maybe? guys that want to go into, or girls that want to go into this um, world of music? Um, the message that I always give out to the younger guys, like whoever wants to do the same career we're doing or anything they're doing, anytime they're presented with a contract or anything to please um, to get a lawyer, doesn't matter how much you're going to spend yeah, on a lawyer, mm -hmm. just like it's worth it. In the long run, it's worth it because we 
um, the same situation happened to us and we learned the hard way. So that's some advice. Very important. Support. That's a great advice, guys. And never stop dreaming, you know? N never so stop dreaming. Well, guys, focused. thank you so much for joining thank me thank today. You for us. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time with another edition of the Bronx Journal.